ahead and make your way all the way down to a comfortable position laying on your back and begin to let the muscles of your body relax as you breathe. Really good inhales and really good exhales flowing in and out of the body. Letting those couple of breaths help wash away any almost like static electricity, any weird things that are going on right now that we don't need to focus on for the next hour. Just letting that breath flow in and out. Knowing that everything has its own time. And now is the time for self-care. So I'm really excited to share this practice with you today. Today it's going to be a mandala yoga class which means a mandala is those circular shapes where everything is symmetrical. And so when we do a mandala yoga class, essentially what we're doing is doing a series of poses that bring us facing toward the back of the mat. And then we repeat those poses again on the second side to help um, complete a circle essentially. And so that's, we've got several different mandalas planned for our class today. I'm excited to share it because it helps you experience a really deep expression by repeating it in order to create that symmetrical circle shape all the way around. And so um, in order to prepare ourselves for this, we're going to take the first few minutes to help warm up our hips and our hamstrings especially so that we, these areas of the body are ready to go for us. So let's begin hugging the knees into the chest taking a few little circles with the knees and the hips. Now, the best thing of mandalas is that circular shape brings us into a cycle. Now, life has cycles, and some cycles, you know, are absolutely necessary to life, like the cycle of oxygen, the cycle of water, the cycle of nitrogen, things like that. They're, they're absolutely vital to life, and without a water cycle, we would never get rain here and that would be pretty problematic. And so think of cycles in your life and how patterns will repeat for us over and over, almost like they need to repeat until we finally learn the lesson. And so think of what cycles are playing in your life currently. And so that's going to be what's resting in the back of the mind. With that, let's drop this left foot down to the ground. Our right leg begins to stretch all the way up to the sky, just straightening it the best that it can go right now. And your personal preference here, do you need to do some nice ankle rolls to help loosen up the tightness in the foot? Making sure you go evenly to both directions? Or are you working more on the calf and on the hamstring? straightening the leg, pulling the ball of the foot toward you, getting really deep through all those muscles. This is personal preference based on what's tight for you this morning. So just enjoy a few really good deep breaths right here. And being playful with these poses. For me, the mandalas are a fun way to you know, to go deep into the poses, but it's also, it brings you to see a different viewpoint for some of the, the shapes than perhaps we normally have. So now from this position, let's begin to open this leg wide out to the right. You're only able to go as wide as this left hip does not have to lift off the ground. So I like to take this right hand curling around the right calf and then that helps to open the leg super wide off this right side. Let's enjoy a few good deep breaths. New muscle groups opening up right here. Good, leg starts to travel back up. Now the left hand takes over the outside of the calf so that the leg can cross past midline. This gets us into the IT band for a moment.
and then from here, bend the right knee, swivel the knee out to the side, and we're placing the right ankle on the left thigh. As soon as that's there, start to thread the hands around that left side. This brings us into the triangle shape with the legs so that we can open up the right hip. The back of the mind's already searching for little patterns. There's a book by Greg Braden called Fractal Time. And what he made, the claim that he makes in that book is that, that patterns in your life will continue to repeat and repeat and repeat just like a fractal until you've learned the lesson that you need to learn from it. And at which point you break the fractal and you're, you're freed to go in toward a new, um, a, I guess a new fractal, a new experience. So take another breath right here. And then as we release our hands, this right knee crosses more tightly over the left knee. That frees us up to grab each ankle with the hand that's on that side. When you've got the ankle grabbed on, pull the ankles inward until you feel a slightly different part of the hips opening up. So an example of that fractal time might look like perhaps a person who is young um, had their parents divorce and that began to set up an expectation that relationships can't last. And so let's say 10 years later, the very first relationship um, completely falls apart and, and that further gives evidence that relationships can't last. And then a next, you know, 10 more years later, the person gets married and um, you know they're happy for a certain number of years but but eventually that ends in divorce and, and this cycle just continues to perpetuate itself just over and over and over again until you realize it and you can start making changes to break the pattern so that's just a simple example of what he means by that fractal time now let's take this shape into one last pose drop the left foot back to the ground this frees us up to bump the hips a little bit to the right, and then the knees can start to fall open to the left. A little twist for this, the body, bringing the stretch a little bit higher up the spine. start to return back down, recenter the hips, and then drop this right foot to plant on the ground. As soon as you do, this left foot is free to stretch up and turn up to the sky. Let the leg extend. Are we doing the ankle rolls or are we extending through the back side of the leg, finding that stretch deeper and deeper? Even this simple process of going from the right side to the left side like this, repeating the exact same poses, it is in its own right a, a mini kind of a mandala, helping us to find that symmetrical balance between both sides of our body. So from here, this is a good point to start opening the leg wide. Take the left hand, perhaps wrapped around the inner calf. And then the leg starts to open out wide. Just make sure this right hip doesn't have to lift at all. Okay, when the leg comes back up, we cross it over to the other side. Right hand wraps around the outside of the calf. The leg gets to cross past midline until we feel the stretch on the outer thigh. OK, 
Okay, left ankle up on right thigh, red hands around the right side. start to release the left knee crosses more tightly over this brings us to that place where we can grab onto each ankle and then pulling the ankles in we're in that deeper hip opener just make sure though that the head can actually drop back to the ground if you had to lift it up to reach for the ankles make sure that there's still that relaxation for the rest of the body Two more deep breaths all the way into the belly. And then as we release, this right foot's on the ground, hips bump over to the left, the knees start to fall over to the left. Feeling how the whole body from the hamstrings up the hips and even up the spine is now brought into a really good balance. Both sides happy, both sides opening. I think that's why mandalas are so beautiful to look at, is simply because there's balance. There's a part of us, I think, that craves balance. We like to see equal proportions. We like to see uh, just some sort of order to this world. So just enjoying that balance being brought right into the cells of our body. Another beautiful inhale. And with our exhale, hips can start to return back to the ground, uncross everything. Let's roll like a ball a few times until we're sitting up. Your choice, how many feels good for your spine today. Eventually when you're up, we'll take a cobbler's pose for a moment, bottoms of the feet together, knees opening. Lift the spine up tall as we start to release up and over. Okay, spine back up. We've got just a simple cross leg shape. From here, let's take a few arm stretches. What we're going to do are three arm circles to each direction. So you're tracing this as wide as you can. As the hands come forward, touch the backs of the hands together. The arm circle up. You keep them together for as long as you can before they need to separate, and then you go all the way around. So two more to that direction, hands together up and back. One more. And then reverse as you're going backwards. You're, it's like you're trying to get your thumbs to touch, even though that's not really possible. You're trying to squeeze yourself together as close as you can behind you. Here's two. And one. Beautiful. A moment with the eagle's arms. The right elbow goes under the left elbow. We try to wrap the palms around or at least touch the backs of the hands together and then lift the elbows up so that we can relax the shoulders down, getting that really good stretch across the tops of the shoulders. Huge inhale opens both arms wide. Exhale, left elbow under, find that wind of the arms. Once we're there, elbows up, shoulders down. And another inhale to open everything up. 
One last little stretch before we get flowing. Let's take a uh, the the cradling cradling your baby pose. This is our right shin coming up, and we're grabbing on with hands or forearms or elbows, like we're cradling our shin as a baby, and rock that baby out. Usually five or six times is enough to help me open up the hip in a good way. So whenever that feels pretty complete, drop this shin on top of the other, lift the spine up tall, fingertips find the ground, and we start to walk forward. Reverse it to return back up, and let's switch it out. We're cradling out left, rocking it out a few times. And as we start to drop this one down, remember always that if you can't quite find the shins, shins that's stacking, just drop it to cross leg instead. Otherwise, spine up tall to start off, and then we walk the hands forward. back up let's swing our legs around we're coming to a nice kneeling position take a few cat cow spines helping the vertebrae still feel happy and alive warming them up follow the sound of your breath exhale and inhale and three more Tuck the toes, flat the fingers, rise the hips up to our beautiful deep downward facing dog. Find little movements that feel helpful. Stay here as long as it still feels good. At any point when you're ready to work your way up to the top of the mat, start to make your way there. Eventually finding this release of the spine up and over. Take one more breath here. Good inhale. Good exhale. Inhale, rise. Stretch up, arch back. And hands make their way down to the heart. Okay, from here we're ready to start our first mandala. This one's gonna be just a nice, easy one, pretty basic, so that you can feel kind of what I talk about when, when I mention that mandala. Now, what we're going to do is, the, the main thing you need to keep in mind just is, the top of the mat is where you're at now, the back of the mat is there, and I'm gonna use those reference points to, to help us make sure that we're all in the same orientation. Left and right that I'm going to say at any point is your left and your right, rather than the left and the right of the room. So from here, let's inhale, float the arms all the way up to the sky. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, half lift, long spine. And then when the hands start to come down, leave the fingertips on the ground, even if you have to bend the knees. And then your left foot lunges back toward the back of the mat. Your left hand stays down to the ground. And your right arm begins to find its way stretching all the way to the side. See if you can find a, a deeper and deeper expression of this pose as we go. So rather than just sticking to the shape, see if your spine is able to lengthen taller. See if your shoulders are able to open a little bit further behind your back. Another beautiful inhale. And then with the exhale, the hand comes down. We rotate the back heel down. As soon as we're there, we're 
were able to rise up to this goddess pose, both feet turning out to a nice 45 degree angle. The knees bend down into a squat position. The arms open out left and right. And we just hold ourselves in this beautiful strengthening pose. The hips sinking open nice and wide. A few good poses into this strength. Another good inhale. And then from here, the exhale brings us down, hands plant up to the top, of, uh, sorry, the back of the mat now. Step the right foot forward. We're back in that standing forward fold. Inhale, half lift, long spine. Exhale, plant the hands down. This one is the right foot lunging back. So now we're, we're in this good sinking shape to this side. The right hand stays down, the left hand circles up to the sky. Continue to find a deeper expression, long spine, shoulders opening. hand comes down, the back heel rotates down. From here, we're able to rise back up to goddess pose. Find that sinking squat position. This time, let's add a couple of pulses, just increasing the strength. So the knees, the thighs are pulsing up and down. At the same time, the arms are gonna do some nice circles. Five, four, three, two, one, reverse the arm circles. Five, four, three, two, one. Good, find your weight sinking even more. Find the hands planting back up to the top of the mat. We're stepping that left foot forward. We're in the forward pull to wrap up our mandala. Take another good inhale. Another good exhale. Now circle the arms to the sides, stretch up, arch back, and hands down to the heart. Now that's one example of a mandala. Um, that is the way that we do it when we do one side, of uh, one left, and then one right to bring us back. So essentially it's a half circle, and then a half circle. The way that I'm gonna show you next is a second way that you can do a mandala. And this is by repeating the same side twice. So we're going to do left and then left again, and that'll complete a whole circle, and then right, and then right again. And that'll complete it all the way back up to the top. So here we're gonna take just a moment with a spinal prep for this. Circle the arms up to the sky, grab onto the left wrist, and then pull that left wrist over to the right side to stretch through the side body. Good, reaching back up, grab onto the right wrist and pull the right wrist all the way over to the left. Beautiful, reaching back up, find the legs. And then from here, joining the hands together, bringing the hands in front of the heart. This is where we're going to start. So from here, this left knee starts to float in front of us. It's okay if your toes are still on the ground. And it's also okay if you're floating the knee clear up to a 90 degree angle. Wherever we're at, we're going to try to take a twist. Right hand to the left thigh, left hand opening up behind us. Beautiful, returning forward. Kick this left foot back to warrior three. Land that foot at the back of the mat, sweep the arms up to the sky into warrior one. Take an inhale, exhale, open up into warrior two, maybe widening the steps just a bit. Beautiful. 
from here. Straighten both legs. Take that goddess pose again. This time, one hand rests on each inner part of the knee. We're sinking the hips back, leaning forward just a bit to get that good thigh stretch. And then from here, we plant the hands at the back of the mat. Step the front foot back. Take a flow. You're welcome to just be on knees as you lower the chaturanga. Take a nice back bend. Tuck the toes, lift the hips into downward facing dog. Float the right leg up to the sky. Step the right foot forward and through to the top of the mat. Left foot steps forward also. Circle up to the sky. Hands to the heart. Good, repeating that all again. Same side, left foot starts to float. Right hand to the outer part of the knee. Left hand opens up to the twist behind us. Turn, hands at the heart. Kick back, warrior three. Landing gently, warrior one. Sweep the arms up. Inhale. Exhale, open up, warrior two. Good. Turning open to goddess. Hands rest on the inner thigh. Sink the hips low. Standing back up, cartwheel the hands back up to the top of the mat, step back, take a flow. You can absolutely be on your knees if you'd like. Back bend and down dog. From here, right leg floats up to the sky. Step it forward and through. Left foot also steps up. Take an inhale and exhale. Inhale, circle up to the sky. And hands at the heart. Okay, second side, right foot starts to float. Find your balance. When your balance is there, left hand to the knee, right hand opens up behind you. Return, hands at the heart. Take the leg back through warrior three, land. Warrior one, the arms sweep up. Inhale, exhale, warrior two. Goddess, sinking the hips low. Straightening the legs, then cartwheel the hands to the back of the mat. Step back, add in a little flow. between hands, right foot forward, take an inhale, and exhale, inhale, rise, hands at the heart, last side to bring this back up to the top of the mat, this one right leg floats, left hand to the thigh, right hand twisting open behind you, Turn, hands at the heart, float this leg back through our beautiful warrior three, land the toes, land the heel, sweep the arms up to the sky, warrior one, inhale, exhale, open up warrior two, turn yourself open to the long edge, taking goddess. Straighten through the legs, cartwheel up to the top of the mat, step that foot back, another little flow.
Beautiful. Body very warm by this point. So enjoying all of that. And from here, right uh, left leg floats up to the sky. Step that foot forward and through. Right leg also steps up. Take an inhale. Take an exhale. Inhale, rise. And finishing up, hands down to the heart. Very good. Now our next one, our next mandala, it brings us a lot lower to the ground to get our hips very, very open. So in order to get to that position, we're gonna start off from the down dog. So let's take a sun salutation to bring us to down dog. Using lots of those today to keep us warm. Inhale, float up. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, hands down. Step walker, jump the feet back. You're welcome to drop the knees down. As we strongly lower the, all the way down to the ground. Another beautiful back bend. And downward facing dog, our starting position. So from here, float the right leg up to the sky. Bring the knee to the nose and try to hold for just a moment. Float the leg back up. And step the right foot to the outside of right hand. Here we're going for lizard pose. You're welcome to stay with the back knee lifted or the back knee dropped. You're also welcome to stay up on hands or drop one or both elbows. It's however deep your hips are willing to travel through. Planting the hands. The legs essentially stay in the same orientation. We're just flipping onto the back heel. So this right knee is still bent. And we flip onto that left heel, left leg very straight. So we're in this nice low spot. You've got a couple of different places where you can play with right here. You can stay exactly in this spot where the fingertips are down. You could also try to lower further down, closer to the elbows. Alternatively, you could try to find a balance here. Try to bring the hands in front of the heart. Okay, from this spot, hands drop down. We straighten both legs and shift our weight over this left foot, even turning ourselves more square to the ground. The left foot prepares for pigeon toe. Pose, so the toes start to go clear off to the right edge. The knee drops down to the ground and we're in pigeon pose at the back of our mat. Going down to elbows if, you, if that's comfortable for you, sleeping pigeon. Very good, walking back up onto the hands, tuck the back toes. We're floating this left leg all the way up to the sky, a really good reach. And then drop left foot down, right leg floats up to the sky. Shifting forward, bring the knee to the nose. Lift the right leg all the way back up to the sky. And then this time, step the right foot to the outside of right hand. We're doing right side again, so that way we can bring that full mandala into a circle. This is lizard pose. You can keep the back knee lifted or dropped. You can be on wrists or elbows. Coming back up onto hands, we go to that low squat position. So this Right knee stays bent. We rotate onto the left heel, left leg straight, and shoes perhaps the same variation as before. Dropping lower or finding a balanced hand at the heart. Or maybe play with a new position, your choice. We've got two more breaths right here. And 
And then we drop the hands down, straighten through both legs, turn ourselves up to the top of the mat. And then this left foot turns into pigeon pose. So swivel the toes off to the right side, drop the knee to the left side, and lower ourselves down into sleeping pigeon. this left leg to reach up to the sky. Step the foot down. Good. Pedal the knees out for a moment. We're about ready to switch sides. So from here we start with the left leg floating. Bring the left knee to the nose and pause. Float the left leg back up. Step left foot to the outside of left hand. Lizard pose. You can be high or low. back up to hand if you lowered. We're lifting the back knee up and rotating onto the right heel so that way we're in this little squat position. Choose one of the variations here. Hands down, elbows down, or hands in prayer position. We're dropping hands down, straighten through both legs. Walk the hands to the back of the mat, and then this right foot goes into pigeon pose, dropping it down gently, lower yourself all the way down. hands we're setting up for the very last cycle to bring us that last 90 degree turn back up to the top of the mat I guess 180 degree turn so tucking the back toes float the right leg up to the sky step it down to the ground left foot floats left knee to the nose float left foot back up and left foot steps to the outside of left hand Lizard pose, any variation. Good, planting the hands. Tuck the back toes, lift the knee up, and then just rotate onto that right heel. In that low squat position, choose your variation for this side. Beautiful, hands drop down, both legs work through straight. We're planting our hands up at the top of the mat, and then this right foot goes into pigeon pose. One last time, perhaps dropping to sleeping pigeon. And to wrap it up, full circle, hands plant, tuck the back toes. Float this right leg to reach up to the sky. The foot lands. We drop down to knees and just enjoy a moment with child's pose. Okay, from here, we're going to sit down and we're going to sit down closer to the top of the mat. The left 
leg is going to be crossed on the ground, just, just like a normal cross leg, cross leg seated position. That's how the left leg is oriented, just down. This right leg is trying to cross to the outside of that left foot and stay planted. From here, we're going to take a twist. If this is not working with your hips, the right foot can be to the outside, but in a moment, we're going to do a transition where you have to have it cross to the outside. So, so if you need it for now, though, just take it to the end of your choice. I personally like to take this twist by lifting my spine up tall and then starting to slide this left elbow around the knee to hug around it. The other hand's behind me and I wind my spine into that beautiful twist. If you prefer a different arrangement for gripping, that's okay too, your choice. Good, spiral open, the right hand is at the knee, the left hand behind you. Take a moment with a counter twist to the other side. Okay, now this is the point where the, this right foot needs to be crossed over to the left side because we're gonna turn ourselves backwards by this arrangement of the feet. So both feet are on the ground. Our hands are spiraling to this left side of us. And then once we've got our hands down, we're able to straighten both legs up. We're facing to the back of the mat now, hanging nice and heavy. With the feet staying nice and wide like this, we're going down into a yogic squat. If it's too much for your knees, you're gonna stay higher like this, just resting your elbows on your thighs. If you can go all the way low, we're taking our elbows to the insides of our knees, our hands in prayer position. If the hands travel down, it pushes the knees open. Spine trying to straighten up. If you even want to play with this variation today, continue to sink your shoulders lower, further down on the knees and see if you can tuck your hands to rest on the ground behind the feet, dropping the head heavy. Good, we have an optional crow pose here. If you don't want to do crow, crow pose, just stay in this garland pose for a little while instead. If you're doing crow, plant the hands, take the knees up to the triceps, and whether or not you actually take off today doesn't matter too much, but trying to find the moment, perhaps, of playing with the balance, even if it's just in and out a couple of times. Not staying here too long, maybe three or four more good deep breaths. Whenever you drop back down, you can roll out your wrist a few times perhaps returning to that tucked arm shape of the pose. Good, eventually unwind the arms, plant them in front of you, straighten the legs, we're in that wide leg forward fold again. From here to come sitting to the other direction than we were before, all we have to do is continue to circle the hands off that left side, bend the knees, and then when you come down to sit back facing up to the top of your mat, you should have this left thigh crossed over, it's the second side. Left foot trying to plant to the ground, or if you need to unwind to make your hips work, that's okay too. Here we take the second side for the spinal twist. So whatever grip you'd like to do on that left knee, I like to hug my arm around the knee, straighten the spine up, the other hands behind us, we twist open. Take another good breath in. Nice exhale. Take the counter twist for a moment. Left hand is now on the knee. 
The right hand is behind you. Good, as that wraps up, let's open both legs wide. It's okay to have bent knees if that's where you're at. Both legs spreading wide enough that we can start to try to walk forward. Start to walk the hands all the way until the hands are surrounding this right foot. Make sure that you keep a little bit of energy in the left side so the left toes can stay pointed up rather than starting to collapse forward or backward. So we've got some energy down in that hip, down in that leg, and we're stretching over this right side. Slide the, the right hand to the plant to your right side. Stack your shoulders. And then this left arm circles up and over, long, long side body stretch. Good, curl that shoulder back down. We're reaching over the right leg again. Starting to walk long through the center. Walking over to surround the left leg. Now remember, right leg needs a little bit of energy and a little bit of focus as we're leaning for this left side. Sliding left hand to go a little bit further to the left to support us. Stack the shoulders, reach the right arm up and over. Dropping it back down. Walking the hands back to the center one last time, maybe a teeny bit deeper than the first. And here we are rising back up, taking the entirety of our class into a full circle now. We're turning down onto our backs. And we're allowed to take a full minute or so to do any last poses that our body is craving. So does your body want another little twist to help you feel complete in your circle of class? Does your body want a little happy baby pose? Any of these variations and poses, you're welcome to explore until everything feels complete and whole and like you wrapped up this cycle wonderful class we got to share together and as we're here winding things up with these last movements allow your mind to fall back onto that idea what patterns am I repeating in life even what patterns is the world growing at me are there any patterns that the world can teach me about myself by how it revolves because I personally believe you can't see things in the greater part of the world without that being a representation, at least in a small part of what's going on inside of you. I think the world reflects that back at us. But whatever cycle that you're thinking of, is there one little thing that we can do to change our fractal, to be more of a pleasant one? Some of the mandalas we went through today maybe were your favorite and maybe others were not. And all of that's okay. But how can we choose in the cycle of our life to see more of what we love? Take a deep breath in. And out. Now we'll rest in quiet, contemplative calmness for the next few minutes together.
begin to deepen your inhales and your exhales. Introduce little movements back to your fingers and your toes, ankles and wrists. Stretching out like we're waking up first thing in the morning. eventually rolling over to a nice fetal position on one side. Allow yourself to enjoy perhaps three or four more good deep breaths right here. Eventually rising all the way up to sit when you're ready. Joining hands together in front of the heart. And here we find ourselves contemplating our own personal mandala, our fractal. And we ask ourselves, is this the fractal I want to be on? Is there something I can do, even one small thing today, just to start changing it, start changing my thoughts, catching myself a little bit more, start changing my habits. So with this contemplative idea to lead us forward today, let's wrap up the time we got to share together with the sound of OM. Inhaling together now. OM. May we be filled with light and happiness and peace. Namaste.